Hey everybody, welcome to Part-Time Table Topper. My name is Adam and I have a very cool project for you guys today. So this is our fourth video and the last video we did some interchangeable one by one terrain tiles that worked for a city canal district or docks or for that particular one it was supposed to be like Venice. And I wanted to make another board for you just because it kind of happened to work out with something else I was working on and I was like, you know what, let's show people how to make this. So. It's going to look a little bit more complicated than the last one we made, but the truth is it's actually a little bit easier. We are going to be making, if I can fit this in the screen, this. So what I have here is a full two foot by two foot swamp terrain board. Uh, the idea with this is that, you know, there's a lot of empty space on it so that you could add trees or, you know, huts, docks, ruins, whatever you wanted to do for your encounter. But it's a very cool, very realistic, versatile board, and it's actually very easy to make. So I'm going to walk you guys through it, and let's get started. First, you're going to want to take a two foot by two foot piece of XPS foam and glue that to a two foot by two foot piece of plywood. This is just a smaller one for display purposes. Next, you're going to want to get some tacky glue, and then you're going to want to get some ready board or any kind of a thin foam to create an elevated surface. Now, the first step has already been done here, but just for display purposes, we're going to take that tacky glue and you're going to want to put that onto the plywood, put the XPS foam on top of that, line up the edges and weigh it down. Now, grab your ready board or whatever thin foam you've chosen, lay that down on top of the XPS foam, and we're going to draw in the areas that we want to represent the land. If you remember the look of the swamp board at the beginning, you saw that there were some water areas and some land areas. This is going to represent where the land is because it's just going to be slightly elevated from the base. Now, take out your hobby knife and cut out that shape you just traced so that we can get ready to place it on your board. Now this ready board comes with some paper attached to it. Just make sure you peel that off because you only wanna work with the foam surface. Now that we have all of our shapes cut out, we are going to glue all of these down to our XPS foam to create the layout of our swamp board. And again, just to make sure everything lays flat, make sure you weigh it all down while it dries. Now, get out that hobby knife again, go along the edges and make sure that everything is completely flat and flush. We don't want any of that ready board hanging over the edge because that's going to make our resin pour a lot easier later on. Now it's time to make our mud or earth texture. Take some PVA glue, sand, a lot more than what you're seeing there, and then a little bit of either a dark brown paint or a brown paint with some black to darken it up. Now, I'm just eyeballing the measurements here, but we are going to need a lot. So I'm pouring a lot of that PVA glue, a lot of sand, because sand should be the main ingredient. We want it to be kind of like, you know, an earthy, grainy texture, and then just some of that black and brown paint. Now again, I'm eyeballing this, so I'm gonna mix it up here, and if I see that I need to change anything, I just add more paint, more glue, more sand to the mixture. In this case, I did need to add some more sand because it wasn't quite thick enough. Now, we're just gonna pour that and spread it all over the board. You see here I already poured on my first bowl and I had to go back and even make a second mixture. Then I'm gonna take out a spoon and just spread everything around until it's even.
And here is what it looks like when it's dry. Now it's time to make our base layer of foliage. We're gonna take some clear PVA glue, some dried oregano, and some other flocking materials to start making the board have that swampy look. You know, I've also used some hot glue here to go back and just clean up those seams. There were some spots after the glue dried that peeled up the edges and you don't want any holes or cracks available. Now, I'm spreading that clear PVA glue around with an old paintbrush and just kind of spreading it all around the board. The good stuff about this is it does dry with a little bit of a glossy look, which in this particular case is great because swamps tend to be quite wet. Now, I'm taking that dried oregano and just kind of very lightly spreading it around to give the dried leaves look. And then I'm using some of that blended turf by uh, Woodland Scenics to create a very, very dead grass and mossy look. After that, go back and create some bright green spots, but do it very sparingly. Now we're gonna create the base layer for the swamp water. If you didn't want to do a resin pour, this is a perfectly acceptable step that you can do and then be done. Here are the paints that I'm using to kind of create a like a greenish, brownish, swampy look. You see that I'm just gonna randomly spread it all around the areas where the water is going to be. Same thing with that brown here. Then I'm just gonna take a paintbrush and blend it all together. Just add a couple drops of that darker green sporadically and blend that in to really give that water some texture. Now, truthfully with the resin pour that I'm about to do, this step is probably a little unnecessary, but I just didn't want to take any chances that that, uh, that mud material would shine through the resin. Now, head down to your local craft store or hobby store and pick up a bunch of fake plants. It doesn't really matter what you choose. All that does matter is that we're gonna trim all of these down to make smaller plants for our board, as well as some dried sticks that I picked up from my yard over the years to use as fallen trees. Now I'm gonna use hot glue to put these down because I want it to dry quickly standing up. Also, don't be afraid to put them everywhere. You know, one of the traits of swamps is that there are a lot of plants poking up from the surface. So just put it anywhere and everywhere you feel is good while leaving some open space for scattered terrain in the future. Now, to make that swamp water, we're gonna do a resin pour. Get out some resin tape, which you can find on Amazon, any two-part resin that you wanna use, and then a couple acrylic paints to muddy up that water. Now, we're gonna take that resin tape, and this is why making sure the sides were completely flat was so important. We're gonna put that around the spots where the water would be pouring over the edge of the board just to make sure nothing drips off when we do the resin pour. Now, follow the instructions on your resin exactly. Please make sure you're doing it in a well-ventilated area or that you're using a mask or ideally both. Uh, but here you see that I'm using a two-part that you have to mix equally. I'm gonna mix it together and then once it's halfway through, I'm going to go ahead and pour a couple drops of that acrylic paint into here just to really thicken and muddy that water up. I don't want the water to be transparent. I really want it to look murky. When you're doing this too, really do just a couple drops. Less is more in this scenario. Now, 
slowly and carefully spread that all around the areas where you're going to have your water. You see here too that I'm tilting the board around in multiple ways just to try to get that resin to fall into different areas. Even that wasn't quite enough, so I did take a crafting stick and just kind of push some of that water effect around as well until all of the, uh, the painted surface underneath was covered. Now for some extra effect, I'm gonna make some water lily pads here. So I'm just gonna pluck off some of these leaves and while the resin is still wet, I'm just gonna drop those in right at the top of the water all across the board. Now I'm just trying to take a little bit of extra resin and fill in some of the gaps that I couldn't quite get to. Now after it's dry, this is what it looks like. Now if you applied that tape right, you're gonna see that it's doing its job. Nothing is spilling over onto the floor, nothing is leaking, and that is exactly what you want. Then, once it's all dry, just peel off your tape. Now let's go ahead and finish this board up. The first thing that I'm gonna do is take these plants and muddy them up a little bit, either with a shade or a homemade black wash. The reason for this is these fake plants tend to have like a glossy coat on them, and you could take the time to strip that off, but I honestly didn't want to. This works just as well for me. I'm just gonna take this brown wash and dab it over all of the plants to really muddy it up and make it look a little bit more matte and murky. Now we're going to paint the edges black just to give the board a nice clean finished look. Now some of those areas where I used hot glue to seal up the cracks are still exposed, so I took a little bit of an earth texture, put that over those seams, and now I'm just going back and putting on a, uh, an Agrax earth shade to try and make that blend into the water. Now this is just me doing some backtracking. I wanted some of that flocking to be on the logs and you know I wanted it to look like they had some moss and that they'd been there for a long time so typically I would have done this step back during the flocking phase but I'm gonna go back now and add some of that blended turf or some of the bright green to make it look like there's some moss there. And now we're done. And that's it. That's everything that you guys need to make this exact board right here or some variation of it. Uh, hopefully you found the tutorial helpful and you got to make a board of your own. You know, like I said, when you look at the finished product, it does look very complicated and detailed, but the truth is when you actually break down the materials and the process to make this, it's pretty simple, uh, even if you're a beginning crafter. So if you did, find this tutorial helpful, you had fun making your board, please let me know by liking the video. And if you wanna see more tutorials I have coming out, feel free to subscribe. And in the meantime, happy crafting, happy gaming, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.